Hey. Your overall kind of assessment of today in, in practice? It was up and down. You know, we did some great things, and then we didn't do some great things, you know. So just inconsistent overall. Um, thought we did some really good things in seven on seven. Uh, made a lot of plays. Had guys open, guys making, making catches. Um, got the team, did some good things in team against the defense. Um, and then the second team came back and uh, wasn't, wasn't as clean. And then into that two minute, you know, we just weren't um, playing at a high level, what we expect offensively. So uh, just too inconsistent for today. You know, have to learn from it, clean it up. You know, they're throwing a lot of different looks at us that we really didn't prepare for, you know, just coming out for a half practice with them. Um, so it'd be good learning tape. We'll be able to take a look at it, learn from it, and, um, and be better moving forward from it. Can you explain to Phillips, you guys connect really well. During two minutes, there was a bit of a struggle. What was behind that? Because it seemed like there was there was like a disconnect. Um, really, only think of one of them. Uh, you know, one I threw away. I was getting quick pressure. He was about at five yards, and we needed to go fifty plus yards. So, for the time, wasn't worth the, the five yard completion on a, on a short one. So I just kind of threw it away in his general direction. Uh, another one, uh, I think we had a quick beat inside, so I had to get the ball out of my hands on a, on an option route. I thought he was going to sit. He, he broke out. So that was a, a miscommunication there. But um, yeah, I feel overall, I feel really confident in Kyle and his ability to read defenses and, uh, and be on the same page with him. Any root cause or, or similarity in what was going wrong in the disjointed two minute? Um, you know, they're, they're doing a lot of, uh, a lot of pressure. It looks we hadn't talked about, you know, usually going to a game with a game plan, a protection plan. And, um, you know, we didn't we didn't really have one for for the looks that they were throwing throwing at us. So uh, it's a good learning experience. That's not an excuse. You know, we did have opportunities if we would have just done our jobs and we we, we could have been effective and, and moved the ball down the field. Um, you know, we had a couple procedural penalties and holding penalty, which obviously will kill you know two minute drives. Any penalties in inside two minutes are going to kill you. So have to clean those things up. You know, you have to be able to get the play started and and play clean football. Uh, but a lot we can learn from and look forward to doing that. Um, a little bit in the, in the two minute, you know, they're playing, playing leverage a couple times, you know, we had plays that have been effective for us and uh, just ended up being bad leverage against the coverage that they were, they were playing which made it tough, you know, so um, I don't think they were playing overly aggressive, you know, they, they, Played aggressive in the uh, in the one on one period and in the two on two period, you know a lot of a uh, lot of contact and uh, going to be contested catches, which is what's going to be, especially down there low in the red zone. Um, they're not going to call that contact. So as receivers, as an offense, we have to be able to play through that contact and and make a tough catch, you know, with somebody you know on your back. How much combination of work against maybe the Ravens in the joint practice last week and this week maybe helped to get this team ready for the season? Oh, it's great work. You know, like I said. Uh, last week, you know, it's it's looks and, and people that you haven't been going against. So uh, you're you're getting exposed to uh, more defense, uh, more personnel, uh, which is only going to make you better, right? You come out here, compete. Uh, everything's not going to be perfect, but you can learn from the tape. And next time a similar situation comes up, and hopefully we can nail it. How important, Ryan, is it that, that you guys get some more explosive plays? You think this season, and I guess also, do you see some elements of that starting to happen? Yeah, I think our guys have been making making some plays. You know, I think uh, if you look at the past few weeks, what we've been able to do out here and, and some of the play action game and, and guys going up uh, and making plays, um, we've had that. So yeah, excited for for the opportunity to, to be better in that area and um, you know really compliment what we do in the run game. How much has Grace improved his route running beyond just the go routes and the deep post? How much has he improved his short and intermediate route running? Yeah, he's become a much more rounded receiver. Obviously, he has that, that size, that strength, that speed uh, that everyone knows he has. But he's, he's becoming more and more rounded the longer he's here. So, um, you know, getting more opportunity. He's made a bunch of plays for us, so he's gotten more opportunity and just hope to keep the foot on the gas with him and keep developing him. What is your role in the development of Nick as he grows into that right tackle position? Um, I mean, it's kind of twofold, right? Just leading, leading. Um, Encouraging and then also holding him accountable. You know, obviously, uh, if he's in there, we're going to need him to play at a high level and uh, and operate the way we expect to operate. And then also, it's it's loving him up and and letting him know when he does a good job, and um, that we have a lot of confidence in him being able to to block effectively both in the run and pass game. Taylor said that we shouldn't make too much of what basically amounted to be a half practice against the opponent. But can you learn a lot from, I guess, the new mistakes that happened today? Yeah, no doubt. Like I said, we didn't 
you know, come out with a, a full plan um, against all the looks that, that Arizona was going to throw at us. You know, there's an aggressive coordinator, aggressive defense, and threw a, a bunch of different looks at us. So, um, you know, we knew we were probably going to get a, a bunch of crazy looks, didn't know exactly what they're going to be. They ended up being things that, uh, things that you don't see too often in the NFL. Um, but it's good work for us. You know, a lot of looks we can learn from, and, um, you know, we're going to play other teams that have pressure packages and, and personnel packages where they're, they're moving guys around, playing, you know, down lineman, backer, nickel, safety, and uh, going to have to be able to identify those and, and block them when we get those opportunities. Brian Kyle had such a good camp, and he had an off day today. He said it himself. He seemed extremely frustrated, but how much maybe can that benefit sometimes, just having that off day, going back and looking at the things you didn't do right or maybe what went wrong? Right, everything's a learning experience, right? So especially on, on days that maybe – things didn't go the way you wanted them to, you know, you take a real critical look and uh, have, you know, more than one thing to say, okay, I can fix that tomorrow, right? You know, some days on a, on a good day, it's only like one or two little things. You say, okay, I fix this, tweak that. Day doesn't go your well. You might have four, five, six, seven things, you know, you can say, okay, I can do this different. So um, it's all an opportunity. And as long as we're learning from those opportunities and um, not making the same mistake when it comes up again, you know, we're getting better and, and we'll be better for it. Hey Ryan, how do you self-assess days like that that you may have out of camp? The same way, same way as I did, you know, whenever I was, when I was younger. You know, I think um, you look at situations for what they are. I think when you're evaluating plays for me now, it's like, okay, was my decision right? Was I in the right spot? Uh, did I make the right adjustment? And uh, does the ball in the right location? And so just constantly going through play in, play out, talking with the coaching staff, um, on what, what led me to a certain area of the field, what led me to a certain read, and how could I uh, fix that? What, what's my thought process? Making sure I'm on the same page with those guys. Um, but yeah, it's, it's constant, you know, whether it's little things with footwork or um, adjustments in the pass protection, adjustments to the route, getting back to a certain part of the read quicker. You know, it all, it's all uh, fluid, so it's a constant learning, learning experience. Can you get a good assessment of, of pass pro, Ryan, and, and days like today, you know, when there's obviously no contact with the quarterback, do you still get an idea of what the pass pro is like for you? Yeah, no doubt. You feel it, right? You, you feel um, proximity and, and colors of jerseys uh, in your area. So, um, yeah, just like everything out there today, there was, there was some good and there were some things that we need to improve upon. So, um, good opportunity for us to take a real look at the tape and, and make those adjustments. How often over the course of the season does that happen in a game? And what is the process for adjusting to that so that perhaps you don't have what happened out there in two minutes when you're seeing something you're not ready for? Yeah, it happens occasionally during the season. Less, definitely way less during the season. Uh, just so you have a lot of tape to look at, and it may be one look as opposed to uh, a bunch that, that you weren't, uh, weren't prepared for. So uh, just be able to, when those, when those situations come up, you know, stay true to your, your process, try to make the best decision protection-wise that, with the rules that we've been given uh, to make, and then take care of the football. You know whether it's um, you know throwing it away or uh, or just being safe with it. You know just just making sure that um, you're not making a bad situation worse by by doing something reckless with the football. Do you, think you, need to play, do you think you need to play in the preseason, or do you feel like the work you've done so far has gotten you ready? I don't think I need to play. You know, we'll see what, what Coach Vrabel wants me to do. Uh, I feel like I've gotten a lot of really good work out here with the guys. Um, Excited about, about what's in front of us here this next couple of weeks to, to keep tuning up things and, and learn from days like today. So, um, you know, we'll see what, what happens this weekend, but uh, I feel really good about the progress we've made and, and hope to continue making it as we move forward. <laughs> Ryan mentioned inconsistency, but what were your overall takeaways from the joint? Well, I mean, I thought that there was some good stuff. I thought seven on seven was, was good. I didn't think the, you know, down here in the red zone, I think the one on ones, it's, it's the same stuff, and we just have to realize it's going to be contested. There's going to be contact. Um, you know, we have to do a better job of, you know, attacking a football and keeping guys off of us, and that's what it's going to be. It's tight. It's quick. Um, thought we got some good work in the, in the team against ourselves, and then the offenses didn't do much there in the in the two minutes. So we'll have to we'll figure that out. Yeah, the officials work a little bit counter to what you want to get done at certain points in terms of you were talking to them about wanting to move on with things. Well, I mean, you know, they had the tackle, you know, in the backfield. Again, they're, they're doing what we're asking them to do. Right. 
you know, I mean, I think just would have liked to seen, you know, them execute the you know, down, down clock or whatever. And, you know, again, we tell our guys if they warn you um, and you don't scoot up, then they're going to call, you know, and they're going to call a penalty. So, you know, that's, that's how it goes. Officials are out here. They're working and, you know, we have to know, you know, have to get a good idea of how they're calling the game. Were you pleased with the way that the defense kind of held Murray in the pocket, didn't let him escape very much in the two minute and made him dump it down? Um, yeah, I mean, every week's a different quarterback and clearly uh, his his talent is, you know, is, is something that, you know, you have to kind of be conscious of and, you know, and that's, you know, that's what he does very well. And they worked it a little bit in seven on seven and, um, you know, each week it'll be a new challenge about you know where where the quarterback is, what he can do, and you know what his ability level is. What are the challenges that Kyler Murray brings to defense? Just again, how beneficial are specifically these reps? Yeah, these are these are great. You know, I mean, every time we can go against somebody different, new scheme, um, you know, new set of players with different skill sets, new new concepts, and then obviously a quarterback of of his level um, to be able to to deliver the football. You know, not only from the pocket, but but create plays, um, you know, off platform and being able to attack a defense in n numerous ways. Byard and Hooker were heavily involved in one on ones today. What what prompts you from time to time to send those guys there? Uh, because they're going to have to be involved in all sites, you know, sorts of coverage, and you know, I think their tight end numbers were were probably down, so probably contributed to it. Brian said that there were a bunch of looks that they gave today that you guys didn't prepare for before one practice. He said that doesn't happen much in the regular season, but it does occasionally happen. When they do get a look that they're not familiar with, what do you want them to do? Well, I mean, I think what we want all of us to do is try to be as poised and instinctive as possible. Let your rules um, help you and sort things out. You know, we've got rules at all levels and of each call. And, um, you know, try, try to fix, fix problems, figure it out quickly. Um, take a hit off the quarterback in protection, you know, make a play, uh, you know, as a receiver defensively would be the same thing. You're just trying to avoid, you know, if it's something new, it's a new scheme, you know, safety's got to be able to try to figure it out and, and get the guy on the ground and, and, and save, save a touchdown for those bad things that come up. With two weeks in a row in the two minute drill against another team giving up a sack? Uh, I mean, it's, I don't, I mean, I think that those are tough in two minute. We say, you know, I mean, sacks kill two minute, and you know, whether it's a it's a holding penalty or, you know, a sack, that's that's part of it. That's something that we're going to have to look at and make sure that we're all on the same page and and what our, you know, what we're doing and, and how we can help those guys in the route and not only you know in protection. Coach, you and Cliff go back a while um, with your teammates on that three team. What's the relationship been like and? What do you remember about Cliff as a young quarterback back then? Well, I mean, obviously it was great work. I mean, Cliff's great to work with. This was this was easy communication, open communication about what they wanted to get done, what we wanted to get done. Uh, came over this morning, met, you know, talked with the officials, um, thought things ran smoothly. So, you know, our playing days are long over, you know, so we're, we're going to try to be better coaches than we were players. Guys to knock the ball out today. How's he improved, maybe from the start of camp? Well, I mean, just making progress, Jim. You know, I mean, it's new looks in there each each day for for linebackers, especially young ones. But I think that to see the guys that are practicing the stuff that we're coaching, we talked about the number of attempts that we had coming out of that football game last week defensively. To to see that carry over, and then we have to be better, you know, offensively. We have to be stronger to the tuck and. You know, take care of the football. We know how critical that is, and um, that'll be the case the entire season. With There's Derek a... getting some team period reps today, how is that process coming along as far as just getting him ready for the season and making sure that he's up to speed? Good. I mean, he's involved in all the meetings, and I'm going to try to have a plan with him and try to, you know, get him, get him prepared and, and thought today would be a good day to get him some reps. Uh, might get a little bit of work tomorrow. We'll see how that goes. So, But I think he's... In a good spot. Is that something that you more or less like you monitor from day to day, or like how do you go about planning out what workload he's going to get? Well, I mean, obviously we talk about it every day, Frank and I and Todd, and 
you know, we, we monitor each and every player and their health and, you know, where they're at. So, uh, you know, ultimately a lot of that falls on, on Frank and his staff. I kind of oversee it and decide, you know, when he'll enter back into practice. There was one fourth down, Mike, where, where Malik looked like he threw the ball away. Um, lose track of downs there? Or? Yeah. Should ask Malik. How much, back to Derek for a minute, how much do you have, take input from him as far as putting him out here in the, in the team periods and things well, like that? Well, he wants to. I mean, Derek wants to be as involved as, as possible. You know what I mean? So we have open dialogue, and, you know, he's been great, and he's been all for – you know, whatever it is that that we decide we think is best for him and, and ultimately the team. With Theo uh, out for a little while, that reemerges and, and is moving around again. The versatility plug right back in, or is the guy when he misses time kind of lose out on, on some of the ability to play multiple positions like that? Well, a lot of that is just necessity, you know. So started working at safety and then, you know, got to look and see what you have and try to figure out somebody's got to go there and, you know, you got to have at least two deep. So we figured we'd try him at nickel today. Mike, what did you think of Malik's poise, accuracy, and decision making in the seven on seven period? Uh, I thought it was improved. I thought that there was some good timing. You know, we talked about something that came up yesterday um, against zone and how quickly that ball should be delivered and, and where it needs to go. And so I thought that there were some, some accurate balls, you know, standing where I was. Um, in the seven on seven. Several players talked about the fact that mistakes happen, but what you hope is they're new mistakes, not repeat mistakes. Does a day like today expose some of that as a, a great teaching lesson off of it? I mean, mistakes are going to be part of this game. It's part of life, uh, how you handle them, how you come back, and not trying to make, like you said, the same mistake twice or, or let them kind of mount up, you know, let them start to, to snowball and continue to think about you know, what, what it is that you, um, you know, did wrong, and, and we, we got to move on. There's a lot of snaps in the game. Um, there's a lot of ups and downs, and we got to try to find a way that no matter what the result of the play was, just get back to neutral, get back centered, and, uh, and find a way to, to do our job the next snap, figure out what the situation is. Is it third down? Is it second and ten? Uh, where am I at on the field? What personnel group there? You know, I mean, there's so many things that – you know, we try to get them to, to think about next as opposed to the mistake they made. So, you know, we'll look at it and we'll continue to coach it. And you know, I thought it was, a, it was a good day of work. Stonehouse proven to be an effective holder. Is that kind of a, a wash in terms of the competition? Uh, yeah, I mean, Stoney, I think, is, is, doesn't have as much experience as Brett does. But, you know, that's why we're working them uh, in there and trying to get them as many of those opportunities as we can. What's your level of Last concern one. with Traylon at this point with the lack of consistency? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't really try to get overly concerned. You know, I, I mean, I try to coach and try to figure out who's available each and every day. I, I mean, we've been through a lot. There's going to be, it's a long season. And whether it's Traylon, uh, whether it's Deshaun Hand, whether it's, you know, go right on down the list of, you know, guys that, you know, may or may not be there. Uh, we just put the next guy in. I think that's what we've always done. That's what we're going to continue to do, and, uh, and that's how it goes.